My name is Niklas Emerson and I work in product management for Spotfire. I wanted to tell you about the new features in Spotfire 12.1. Just as a reminder and a bit of context. Data is nothing if it's not used. Spotfire lets you use analytics to support decision making through all modes of analytics, whether it's ad hoc discovery of relationships, outliers, clusters in your data, whether it's dashboards and reports or operational analytic applications to help non-technical users do their job, or data science applications for manufacturing engineers or scientists in the life science area. And it's available on your desktop, in your web browser or on your phone and tablet. Spotfire lets you operationalize insights and lets you deliver insights when and where you need them at the moment of decision. And Spotfire provides this for all kinds of data, static, streaming, in database, in memory, and in any combination. But also insights are nothing if they are not turned into actions, which is why Spotfire lets you act on insights directly from the visualizations context trigger actions in your business systems directly from the visualization. Spotify 12.1 is a mainstream release. Mainstream releases are frequent, approximately every one to two months, and are supported until the next mainstream release is available. Spotify 12.1 provides a set of small but useful improvements, starting with visual improvements for data functions. They can now have icons for easier finding them in the FX flyout. We've also added a new web authoring capability, a new UI for configuring hierarchies in your data. For admins, the users and groups management has a new UI to make user administration and group administration quicker and easier. And also for admins, a new capability to run information services in a separate process on the Spotify server has been added in order to increase robustness of the system against, for example, database driver crashes. So, you can now insert hierarchies in the Spotify web client through the Add Hierarchy UI. Web authors can now quickly change the level of detail in a visualization or combine filters to the more structured hierarchy filter by inserting data hierarchies when two or more columns relate to each other. On the administration side, uh, when you select the username from the user list in the web UI, you can now view the user details, such as the profile, licenses, etc., by splitting the view between the list of usernames and the user details. You can also switch between viewing the user's details in split view mode or full view mode. This provides an easier overview and better workflow since you can now see and edit the user details while keeping the user list pane for quicker user switching. And the very same capability has also been added to groups management to make this quicker and easier. Information services used for accessing data with JDBC now can be run in its own sub-process on the same computer as the TIBCO Spotfire server. The purpose of this change is, among other things, to improve the stability of the Spotfire server and to facilitate troubleshooting. And in the data science area, we now have a new look for data functions. Data functions can now be displayed with icons in the FX panel for faster identification, faster selection among the list of data functions you may have in the FX panel. Sometimes the, this is a long list and the list of available data functions is growing. From a data function developer point of view, this means that you can now assign an icon 
to a data function, either from a list of predefined category-based icons or use your own custom SVG icon. Let's now have a quick look at the demo of this new capability. Here we can see a list of data functions I have available with icons that help me more easily find the data function I want. In this case, I'm looking at product reviews and want to add a sentiment column to enable further analysis using a data function. I configure the input to the data function. Press OK. And Spotfire recommends to add the output to the existing data table, which is what I want to do. The data function executes. And when it's finished, I can find its output, the sentiment column, and I can drag it to the color of the map chart. And by tweaking the default colors a little bit, I can make it easy to start looking for insights using the sentiment of the review comments. And in the data space, we have added another small but useful improvement that relates to column matching when replacing data. Normally, when replacing multiple data tables in sequence, Spotify might prompt you for mismatches found with columns in the new data. We think this is a powerful feature, but it means that you have to stay in front of Spotify to manually confirm the continuation of a workflow. Sometimes you may just want the new data even though there are mismatches and take care of those issues later. That's why we added this new setting to show or hide prompts for column mismatches so that you can launch an automated data workflow and continue to work on other things while data is being loaded. By default, prompts for column mismatches are enabled and existing analyses are not affected. The new setting is available in the data table properties for a specific data table in an analysis document or as a user level option or even as a group level preference set by the administrator. Amazon Redshift Serverless is a recently introduced technology that allows companies to run and scale analytics without having to provision and manage data warehouses. Spotify users are now able to access the new Amazon Redshift Serverless offering via the native Amazon Redshift connector in 12.1. As a Redshift Ready certified partner, Tipco Spotfire already delivers a leading integration experience with Amazon Redshift. Thank you for attending and I hope you find these improvements useful and hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much.